I want to talk about something that affects all of us, and it's a little deviation from the normal, hard-hitting, in-depth, cutting-edge topics about professional woodworkers that we usually talk about. <coughs> usually talk about. <coughs> oh, <coughs> sorry about that. I want to talk about storage. This is working at woodworking episode number. 38 temporary outdoor storage. I have been dealing with this for literally decades. I restore antique canoes. And as you can probably guess, antique canoes are pretty big. 16, 17, 18. I had a 20 footer. That thing was huge. So yes, I do that in my little 400 square foot shop. The way I have my shop arranged, I have basically wall to wall clear area that the canoe can sit in. And when I'm not actually working on it and working on something else, I need the space. I can hoist it into the overhead, the ceiling, and it, it resides up there. I have a, a set of, uh, well, in essence, block and tackle that are tied into a support, everything leading to a taff rail with belay pins that I can manipulate the canoe up and down by myself, and it's really quite easy. But I can really only do one canoe at a time. I tried to do canoe, two canoes once. That did not work out well. So I'm really limited to just one boat. So it wasn't too many years into doing this until it became obvious I was going to need more room. I'm not going to rent someplace five miles away. I'm not going to rent someplace a mile away. I'm just not going to rent space. The easiest solution was to buy one of these El Cheapo 10 by 20 canopies at a big box store. And that's exactly what I did. And honestly, it has worked out pretty well. Let me tell you about it. It might be a good solution for you. Maybe you just need some place to store some lumber. You don't want to leave it outside where it gets wet and it rots and it molds and all that stuff. You want to keep it under cover so that you can use it right away. Maybe you have some tools that just don't fit in the shop, but you don't have any place else to store them and you don't want to get rid of them because you do occasionally use them, this could be a good solution. Maybe you don't really have a shop right now, maybe just a tiny corner of the garage and 200 square feet in a 10 by 20. Wow, that would be luxurious. This could be a good solution for you. So stay tuned and let me tell you, how this has really helped me. So years ago, decades ago, I went to one of the big box stores, Menards in this case, and I bought their El Cheapo 10 by 20 canopy. It was actually made by Shelter Logic. These are the ones that have the white metal tubular frame. There's eight legs on mine, and it has the polypropylene tarp that covers the frame. And if you read the instructions, it says for occasional temporary use. It, these are not designed to be set up and left for years and years. And of course, that's exactly what I have done. The instructions say not to leave up over winter in inclement weather. Yep, I ignored that. Where I am at in Indiana, we're right at the border between climate zones 5 and 6. So we get a little bit of winter. Last year, I think we had like maybe 6 inches of snow. It was pretty pathetic. Our temperatures, if we're really, really lucky, will drop below zero for at least a couple days. But typically, they're, they kind of stay in the 20s. So I can't say that we have harsh winters. I can say that we can have some pretty strong straight line winds with the occasional tornado thrown in. But winds of 30, 40 knots is not uncommon. Fortunately, I've placed my canopy in an area 
beside a fence with some very large trees on the other side of the fence and it's a bit sheltered but it still blows. One of my early canopies actually got picked up by the wind and wrapped around a my wood storage building. Um, that was a fun afternoon but I've really worked out some of the details so that has never happened since. And yes, I know these things are cheap. The first one I bought I think was like $80 and now you're looking at, oh, 140, 160, maybe $200 for these things. So it's not a lot of money. Will they last for years and years and years? Actually, the metal framework will. The canopies, the best I've been able to get is about three years out of them. And then UV deterioration, the fibers just start to break down, which is really fortunate. This is plastic. We want it to break down. We don't want it to last for 500 years. And a replacement canopy is, I just bought one a few weeks ago. It was $90, I believe. So three years, 90 bucks, $30 a year. Yeah, I can live with that. But it's what you do with the canopy that's not in the instructions is what really makes this technique successful. So let me tell you about that. Whenever you buy one of these El Chapos, great big box, bring it home, dump it out at your building site. Try to select a site that is sheltered as much as possible. If you can put it behind another shed or building or something, put it on the, the leeward side of your house perhaps, where it doesn't get direct wind exposure, the better. Sun exposure, that's what breaks down to polyethylene. If there's a shaded area, so much the better. Before you do anything, you really need to check with where you live. There could be HOA governance rules that forbid something like this. There could be neighborhood or city ordinances that don't allow you to put up any type of outdoor structure. So check that before you, you know, invest some time and money into this. It would be heartbreaking to have to surrender to the authoritarians and have to tear something like this down. So you've got your box, open that up, dump it out, spread it out, go through each piece. The Shelter Logic has like four different lengths of tubes. Put all of these in separate individual piles because if you get these things mixed up, oh, your life is not going to be happy. And then read the directions and figure out which part A goes with which part B and organize them that way. Don't get parts intermixed. So these tubes have connectors that join them. And you've got to make sure that you're using the right connectors to join the right pieces. So you want to start with the the ridge. Assemble the entire ridge. This is going to be 20 feet long. Then you add what in essence would be the rafters. The tubes that make up the rafters go in next. Then you add in the either the girts or the top plates depending on your point of reference to complete the upper portion of of the canopy. The only thing you have to do next is to add the legs. This is where you make your canopy shelter special. You need to buy a box of like number eight or number six self-tapping screws. You could use stainless steel if you wanted. I wouldn't bother with it. Just regular chrome plated steel would be perfectly fine. And you're going to use these screws to permanently connect all the connections. One of the greatest frustrations of assembling one of these things is you get one end halfway up and something separates and you end up with these tubes dangling in midair while you're standing on a step ladder, you know, on one foot while trying to balance this other thing in your left hand. It's, it's, it's incredibly frustrating. So eliminate that from the very beginning and screw the thing together. Super simple. Some self-tapping screws will go right through the, the relatively thin-walled tubular metal. 
some you may want to pre-drill. You might find a center punch, like a spring-loaded center punch, handy to set a starting point for a drill bit. Sometimes you can get lucky with your self-tapping screws and they just go straight in. The important thing is that you make those connections permanent. So while the upper section of the canopy is on the ground, go through and make all these screw connections. Be careful not to put any screws on the top of the metal frame where the canopy, the polyethylene tarp, would rub because it is rather abrasion sensitive and we want to eliminate as many abrasion points as possible. So put them on the side or even on the, the underside. Your legs, go ahead and screw those sections together. There's two, two tubes per leg. Go ahead and screw those together. Now comes the fun part. You need to add the legs. If you're working by yourself, I have found it easier to start with one end, lift the thing up, and of course it's going to be all cattywampus. But go to the other side, lift it up, put that leg in. And it looks like you're assembling this giant metal praying mantis. But just go systematically down through here, lift the thing up, and install the legs. It's not that heavy. You carried the box from the store to your vehicle and from your vehicle to the building site. So it's not like we're lifting a whole bunch of weight here. If you have two people, the job does go faster and easier. You might want to do one side by installing all the legs and then lifting up the other side with two people and you can install the, the legs that, that way. Use the self-tapping screw and connect the legs to the connectors. Make sure everything is screwed together. I can't overemphasize how much this is going to make your life simple. Now, if you really want to be a brainiac about this, especially if you're working alone, you would actually put the tarp on before you do the legs. Of course, I've never been that smart, so I always end up having the framework, you know, completely assembled and then have to figure out how to get the tarp like 12 feet up in the air stretched over the, the framework. It can be done. I did it just a couple weeks ago. I take a, a line, a rope, and tie it off to the middle of the canopy and throw it up over the gable end, so to speak. And by working the ridge and the sides, you can pull that canopy all the way down over top of the metal framework and install the canopy yourself. It, it takes just a little bit of, of manipulation. If you have two people, it works even easier. But the smart thing is to put the canopy on while it's still on the ground and then install the legs, lifting everything all at once. Like I've said, I've never been that smart. Now, you need to anchor this thing down. If you just leave it sitting there, <laughs> it is going to blow away. It is a giant sail. So you really need to anchor this. Now, they have little plastic bases that go over the end of the metal tubes so that the tubes don't sink down into the ground. And they give you these little El Cheapo stakes that supposedly you put through the the plastic feet and it anchors everything down. It does not. Uh, you also want to screw those plastic feet into the tube so that they don't end up popping off. You can run guy lines out from each corner of the canopy and maybe even in the middle of the canopy. If you wanted to go really maximum, you could guy the canopy from each, the top of each leg. And that would really hold the thing down. But now you have guy lines, you know, all over the place. Plus, you are taking up more real estate. You may not have that much room to do this. What I have found works really well is go to your hardware store, building supply store, and buy two foot, half inch rebar. It will cost you a couple bucks a piece. And buy two per leg. So to anchor everything, you would need 16 pieces on a four leg or an eight leg canopy. And drive these into the ground at about a 45 degree angle on both sides of one leg. 
in opposing directions, if that makes any sense at all. In other words, what you want to do is to make an X pattern with these driven stakes with the intersection of the stakes at the bottom of the leg. Now, also at the hardware store, purchase some U-bolts. These are, well, as they're described, a U-shaped bolt that has a metal bar on them that you can tighten around the rebar and the metal leg. And you can get quite a bit of torque on this. I have found that to work very, very well and it really eliminate most of the guy lines. I think on my canopy right now, I only have two guy lines and they are in on the windward side of the tarp. So wherever it's getting the most pressure, the most exposure to the wind, I have those guide out. But otherwise, I just have these uh, crossed rebar to tie in the leg to the ground, and that seems to work really, really well. And cheaply. And if I ever need to take them out, it's super simple. You could probably pour concrete piers and attach it that way. That's just way too much work for me, and I don't want this to be that permanent. Because the idea is that someday I may get around to actually building a more substantial structure that I don't have to replace the roof every, you know, two, maybe three years. But that's probably further down the road. So now you have a 10 by 20 structure with a roof, but the side walls are completely open. Well, this is wonderful for picnics and parties, but not so good if you're trying to keep things stored inside completely dry, especially if you're in a, a high wind area. And they make an enclosure kit for these canopies. And a, the enclosure kit usually runs, I don't know, $125, $150 or so. And it gives you four walls one wall with zippers that you can open and close. I have uh, one of these that I purchased that I store canoes awaiting work in. And I can get quite a few canoes in there. And with the side walls, they're completely protected from the weather, and it has worked out very well. Although my wife thinks that it's ugly, and she really wishes they would go. But what about power? I have a 100-foot extension cord. Originally, I used this for an electric weed whacker, and it has served me well whenever I work on canoes out under this, this canopy. Again, it's in kind of a shaded area and is very, very pleasant in the afternoon. It could be 90 degrees in front of my, my actual workshop in the driveway, but back in the backyard, with the canopy tucked up under those trees, it can easily be 5 to 10 de degrees cooler. Very pleasant area. And as far as power, that extension cord really provides everything I have. Now, of course, I'm not, you know, pulling, you know, 20 amps through that. I'm running sometimes a, a shop vac, you know, to clean out the debris from the inside of a canoe. Whenever I'm cutting out gunnel stock, I'm using the circular saw that's drawing 15 amps. The cord will get slightly warm, but I've never had a problem with it blowing a, um, a breaker or getting excessively hot and melting the, uh, the installation. And today, so many people are using cordless products. You could eliminate most of your power tools by simply going cordless. Maintenance on one of these canopy shelters, really not much of anything, just making sure all the connections are holding together and the your anchors are secure, your guy lines, uh, if you're using them, are secure. The canopy will stretch with exposure to UV and wind, and it will start to sag in places. And the, your next rainstorm, there's this little pond formed in one of the corners of the of the of the canopy because the little elastic connectors have really stretched out and, and have given up. The way I have eliminated that problem is to use like paracord or quarter inch nylon line and simply lace the canopy to that top plate bar. 
and it pulls it more taut and usually you can eliminate any of that puddling that you can get from a, a saggy you know canopy but other than that yeah it's pretty much low maintenance you will probably get some mildew mold algae growth just like on any of your other plastic products that are outdoor like vinyl siding you can deal with that with some of the cleaning products or i just ignore it and plan on replacing the canopy you know the the following year you could be really good and take the canopy down in the fall and then set it up in the spring but yeah that's way too much work for me so where do you get one of these modern marvels big box stores like I said, I've bought mine at Menards, uh, Lowe's has them, Home Depot has a kind of a different variation that looks very interesting. Uh, a little bit more money. Uh, Harbor Freight has a Super El Cheapy that would be, well, Super El Cheapo. Um, not much money, but you get 200 square feet of covered storage and you can't really shake a stick at that. So if you think that this might be helpful, I really encourage you to screw all those joints together and have some line that you can lace the canopy on instead of relying upon the little elastic bungee thingies. Give it a shot. It just might solve a problem for you. Recommendations for the week? I really don't have any. There is not a whole bunch on YouTube about setting up these old cheapy canopies. There's a lot of stuff on there about building sheds. Um, that could be good fun. Miss jobs. I had an email from a commercial construction company asking if I would bid on a project that they're doing in the local community. This is something we have not talked about getting into commercial work. I have some experience with it. For a one-person show, quite honestly, you're probably going to spend more time dealing with paperwork than you actually are making sawdust. Is it lucrative? Yeah, it can be. You could also lose your shirt. So if you're thinking about that, I would really encourage you to get under someone's wing, someone who has been doing this for a while. And that could be the contractor themselves. There is such a demand for skilled labor now. Some contractors would be more than willing to train you to kind of hold your hand and walk you through all of the processes just so that they have somebody they can call and do work for them because the labor market is really, really struggling. Something to think about. Maybe we'll do a episode about that someday. So as always, really appreciate your support. Buy me a cup of coffee. That helps to pay the bills. And Skillshare is offering a 30% coupon code and you can find that in the show notes. And until next episode, happy woodworking.